This is a story of people waiting. People waiting for their time to come. It is the story of the Hatikva Quarter, a distressed neighborhood of 20,000 located in the heart of Tel Aviv, yet worlds apart. It's the largest of the 160 project renewal neighborhoods throughout Israel. An Israel of substandard, overcrowded housing, few community facilities, and even fewer social resources. An Israel where 300,000 people, two-thirds of them children, have been left behind the flow of progress. Shlomo Lahat, mayor of Tel Aviv, tells us what the people of Hatikva need most. Show these people uh, that they have roots. They have a culture, they have a civilization, they have what to contribute to our society. Secondly, is to support them and provide them with all the facilities of a modern society. Housing, public facilities, day centers, day crashes, and they don't have it in a thick one. Despite their frustrations, the people are proud of their community and want to make it work. And to show them they are not forgotten, Yitzhak Nabon, Israel's first Sephardic president, has come to Hatikva. President Nabon will spend three full days with the people of Hatikva, with many of whom he shares a cultural heritage. He has davened with them, been invited to meals, even slept in one of their homes, and listened to their problems. They want only what parents the world over want for their children, a good neighborhood, clean and safe. Decent houses with enough room for the children to sleep, study and grow. Good schools, parks and playgrounds, community centers where the children can learn of their heritage and feel pride in their roots. Here at a daycare center, a start has been made. A program of reading enrichment has been developed for five and six year olds most of whom come from homes where their parents are too busy or even unable to read. A successful program and one enjoyed by the youngsters. Limited funds have prevented it from reaching more than a fraction of Hatikva's children. A daily lesson at the center also affords the children a chance to learn something of their own heritage and tradition, be they from Yemen, Iraq, North Africa, or Turkey. But here again, too few youngsters are reached. The proportion of dependent elderly in Hatikva far exceeds that of the rest of the country. A single golden age club in one section of the quarter offers activities to provide warmth and companionship. The few who can be accommodated have responded vibrantly, demonstrating that old age and despair do not have to be synonymous. Here, a group of Yemenite women greet the president with enthusiasm. Scarcely a half mile away, another group of aged provide a marked contrast. While it's true that most of their hopes are for their children and their children's children, they too have their needs, often as simple as a hot meal. Once a week, this synagogue with no outside funding offers its elderly a hot lunch. With the new facilities and increased social services to be provided through Project Renewal, these people will be able to look forward to much more than a single hot meal. They said, all right, we had it and we suffered it, but let's, let, we want a chance of uh, having our children and grandchildren live in different conditions. We want them to advance, we want them to progress, to be educated. These are the Abut Bulls. Shoshana and Yaakov live together with their 19-month-old son, Yanif, in a painfully cramped room with rusty plumbing and a leaking ceiling. President Navon and Mayor Lahat visited them and listened to their problems. It's very hard to live here. In the winter, the walls are wet with dampness. The baby was in the hospital with bronchitis because of the dampness and the terrible cold. When the rain came, pieces of plaster started falling from the ceiling, and it's dangerous. A piece of plaster could fall on the baby in the middle of the night. Because of that, Yanif has slept with us in our bed for the past six months. We don't have money to rent another apartment. At least in Atikva, the rents are cheaper than anywhere else. 
but I'm not willing to live like this. We should have proper schools. What kind of education will my son get? We'd like to have more children, but in an apartment like this, how can we even think of it? The president and Mayor Lahat are aware that the plight of the Abut Bulls is repeated hundreds of times over in Hatikva alone. Sure, the problem is um, very simple. They just don't have a place where to live. And this is a crucial problem which prevails in Tel Aviv, Jaffa. And it's a terrible problem that if we are not going to solve it, I am afraid that peace will be practically disabandoned and not appreciated because this crucial problem will expose the whole Israeli society. The fact that young people can't get married because they just simply don't have where to stay. The sounds are those of any disco the world over. The difference is that this one is located some 12 feet beneath the ground in an unused bomb shelter. This youth club has a dance floor, meeting room, and cafeteria managed by the youths themselves. Some 150 teenagers use its facilities five nights a week. They pay a token entrance fee and take great pride in the club. For many of them, it's the only place they can call their own. Ami Dweck, director of the club, realistically describes the problems facing the urban youth. Well, this is the basic problem for slum area. I mean, uh, many kids at home, uh, lack of uh, encouragement at home in terms of uh, studying, in, in terms of working, quite a strong influence of, uh, of the street. The homes are crowded, kids are most of the time not at home, but they're outside, they are meeting and seeing things that uh, have influence of them. They might uh, meet here drug problem, uh, juvenile delinquency problem, quite serious, I would say. What we are trying is to create a counter atmosphere, a place which is positive in nature. And their feeling is that it's, it's kind of their home. These teenagers are hopeful, energetic kids capable of contributing much to Israeli society. They don't expect an instant solution, but they themselves are anxious to work for it. Despite the distressed environment in which they live, they are not cynical. They believe that change will come. Their greeting of Navon is genuine and excited. But underneath it all is a sense that time is short before their optimism is replaced by cynicism. There is an incredible generation gap between the kids and their parents. Take, for example, the girls. They are taught nothing about sex education or even feminine hygiene. Rather than deal with this, the parents just keep the girls home most of the time. And I don't blame the parents because once the girls are out on the streets, there is no telling where they will end up. Then our budget was cut. Just when we had arranged for counselors for the girls, drawn up a list of the names, even convinced their parents that we only want the best for them. Now these girls could end up on the streets, and they are such terrific kids, Mr. President, really terrific. Whatever is being projected as the very uh, famous uh, project renewal, which I think is uh, can be can be an historic leap forward towards solution of these problems but to give it a better rhythm a quicker rhythm because what's lacking is some hope and if you don't start achieving things then people might lose that hope and that could lead to another frustration with undesirable results Project Renewal is our way of helping them to help themselves. A new community center dedicated by the president during his visit to the quarter is a beginning. Soon, a whole new neighborhood will take shape in Hatikva within the confines of the old. For years, the people of Hatikva have waited patiently. But each time that there seemed to be a chance for a better life, something intervened. A war. Another war. More immigration inflation, 
always something else and never enough coming from us. But now they find themselves hoping that the promise of peace also holds a promise for them, an end to their waiting. Thank you.